Well, first, I would like to thank everyone who is joining us today. My name is Vivian Diaz. I'm the coordinator of the project Pacto de Productividad in Chile. And to start, I would like to tell you about the impact of this ICT Innovation for Inclusion program has. In Chile, Pacto de Productividad is based by the Corona project in, and its partners in Colombia with the territorial model of labor inclusion for people with disabilities based in the International Convention of the Rights for people with disabilities of the UN. And this territorial model of labor inclusion, Pacto de Productividad, among others, promotes and fosters the rights of people with disabilities to be related in the labor context, just like anybody else. It promotes the inclusive spaces accompanying companies in the implementation and adjustments with different activities so that all of the stakeholders in the system of labor inclusion, such as different entities and different and the society, along with private and public entities, develop inclusive processes. Pacto de Productividad Chile is an initiative promoted by the Descubreme Foundation, which has public-private alliances nationwide and is partially funded by the Laboratory of Innovation of the Inter of the lab of the IDP, the objective of Pacto de Productividad is to consolidate a collaboration platform, which is public and private, which manages to effectively collaborate all of the stakeholders in the labor, inclusive labor for people with disabilities based on following law 2115. In this, uh, Labor for Inclusion Initiative, we are aiming to, to elaborate tools which will facilitate the labor inclusion of people with disabilities. The objective of this uh, meeting was to promote different tools that are promising and adequate for the Chilean situation, promoting labor inclusion of people with disabilities in this context. Let me tell you that. Uh, we started selecting initiatives and then the initiative is uh, the idea is to promote the development and deployment of this along with different alliances uh, and measuring the impact the selected initiative is in this process by 20 by the end of 2020 was iot enable india and foundation fundacion once the in this space, uh, these winning initiatives will present an innovative process and the challenges for the implementation to be started soon in Chile during the second semester of 2021. And also we'll know about allies, uh, allied countries where this pilot programs will be deployed. And I would like to tell you that during the first semester of this year, we've been working significantly jointly, jointly with the ILO and Fundacion Once to identify potential allies, potential members of this partnership with the working group uh, in, where we invited representatives of companies and people with disabilities. Up next, we'll know the delegates of this projects and the important stakeholders of organizations in Chile as allies for this implementation. The founder of Egalité, Inclusion and Diversity, uh, Representative Guilherme, and uh, Julian Tarbox representing Novel India and their iTunes tool, a tool for self-learning, which allows people with disability, visual disabilities to create a digital path to work in the 21st century. Blood Seed with Fundación Once and their initiative Productos de Apoyo 3D para la Adaptación de Productos de Trabajo. And on the other hand, we have the organizations with which we are working with these alliances for deployment in Chile, William Cuevas, who's the instructor of technology and IT technician for the labor inclusion of people with visual disabilities. He's representing Fundacion Luz. And we have Dr. Marcela Guzman, uh, under subdirector or vice director of uh, Foundation Pedro Aguirre Cerda. To start this conversation, uh, I will give the floor to the a graduate from the Pontifical, Pontifical Catholic University of the South and by the University of Pointier, also the only representative of Latin America invited to participate in the program of executive and leadership of the MIT in 2019 and being considered one of the 25 main influencers of social justice and inclusion around the world. He's the founder of Egalite, a consultancy company for the inclusion of people with disabilities, employing over 28,000 people with disabilities. Go ahead, Guilherme. Thank you. 
Thank you, Vivian, for the opportunity of being here in Zero Project Conference Latin America. I, I'm sorry for my Spanish, but I'm going to try to uh, give all of my presentation in Spanish. I am Guillermo Braga. I am the founder and the CEO of EGALITE, which is a company that is specialized in the inclusion of people with disabilities. So work inclusion of people with disabilities. We think that it is very important to uh, know how to boost human uh, potential. So our biggest objective is that people with disabilities can show all of their potential in the different work opportunities. We have a platform for recruitment that is absolutely accessible for the different types of disabilities. So we are going to have all of the information, the curriculum, the personal statements, knowledge, the areas of interest, and professional experience, and the disability of the person that if, and also if they need some type of adaptation for the work experience. But the most important thing is to, is represented by this graph. And here we have uh, the work opportunity and also the profile of the candidate, and we have a comparison. So we use an, uh, artificial intelligence to make the comparison from the technical information of the candidate and also their behavior so that we can have the best opportunity possible for them. And all of this tool is absolutely accessible for the different types of uh, disabilities. For a screen reader, we also have the sign language. So all of our platform was thought about for people with disabilities. In here, we have an example of the evaluation, the behavior uh, evaluation that can happen through text and also with sign language. With this technology, Egalité Brazil helped to do a work inclusion of uh, more than 8,000 people with disabilities in more than 20 states of Brazil. And we have a database of 65,000 candidates with disabilities. We have some recognitions. We are the only company in Brazil with a Singularity University Award. In 2021, we were an award winner from Zero Project. We also have projects with Facebook, with MIT. So it is very interesting that now we are able to do this project in Chile. In our business model, we have on the one side, the people with disabilities that want an opportunity, a work opportunity. And on the other side, we have the companies that need to do the hiring. So Chile has, a law of quota, such as in Brazil. So it is uh, mandatory for companies to do work inclusion with people uh, with disabilities. And EGALITE does the connection uh, between the candidates and the companies with our technology. We don't have any cost. This doesn't have any cost for people with disabilities. And here in Brazil, we also have online courses that are free to help them enter the workplace. And the companies are the ones that are going to pay for our recruitment service and also for our consultancy service. These are some of our clients. And a typical question is why a company would uh, pay for this service. We have the example of Walmart, which is very interesting. We did work inclusion of 900 people with disabilities for a year and a half. And the result was very impressive because the 
retention of the people with disabilities was more than double than the people without disabilities. So it is very interesting to see that Walmart with their project of work inclusion had results that were very interesting for the organization and also we were able to have a financial quantification of the gain that we had with work inclusion with people with disabilities. We understand that work inclusion is a process. We know that it is necessary to enable, to provide the necessary tools for the people with disabilities to also commit, be committed with the work of the culture of the company and also uh, to employ the recruitment should be done in in a way that helps the potential and also empowering so that this person can continue having our growth in their organization. Egalite understands that their work in Chile is the most important thing and we need to employ so we understand that our technology can be scalable for other countries. And in this project, we have local organizations that are going to give all the support for the process of enabling and uh, empowering as well. The replication model of Egalite has a software license. We uh, assertively recruit people with disabilities and we give big results for the companies. We have the behavior profile and artificial intelligence to make the match between the candidate and the company. And the platform was built specifically for people with disabilities. So it is not a platform that was adapted. It is a platform that was built for people with disabilities. So this is a flexible technology that can be adapted to different languages and to different cultures as well. The implementation in Chile is not going to be exactly as it was in Brazil, but we have a, a, a technology that can be changed for the different um, aspects. And we also have a training for a better use of technology and for best practices in inclusion. So we have a lot of experience here in Brazil that we can uh, uh, also have in Chile so that uh, we get the best results. And all of this work that we are doing starting in Chile, We are using it to help people with, uh, like Amanda, Gildo, Robert, and Alex. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Guilherme, for your words and your presentation. To continue with our conversation about the challenges and learnings in the implementation of innovation initiatives, I will introduce William, um, William Cuevas. And in the case of uh, Julian, we've moved forward with Fundacion Luz. Julian Tarbox works as a specialist in employment focused on identifying the challenges and solutions that people with disabilities face with Enable India. He's developed projects focused on technology in India, Mauricio, Ethiopia, and now Chile, Ethiopia and Chile. And now he's focused on developing inclusive technology. William Cuevas is 36 and he has a visual disability since he was born. He, since he was little, he was interested in technology and music. He's a technician in programming and he's currently studying as an IT professional. He's been working for Fundacion Luis for six years as an instructor and technician adequating technology for the labor inclusion of people with visual disabilities. Now, Julian will tell us about the iTools initiatives and their proposal, their proposal of implementation in Chile. Thank you, everybody. My name is uh, Julian Tarbox. I'm a program manager uh, at Enable India. Uh, today, I will be uh, presenting the iTool, which is for uh, educate yourself uh, easily. 
Uh, it's a self-learning tool um, which creates digital pathways for people with uh, vision impairment. It's something that has been developed at uh, Enable India uh, by people with vision impairment, for people with vision impairment, uh, to enable uh, use of computers. The great thing about our solution is that the feedback that we get is that it's really easy to use. Uh, trainers uh, and, teacher, uh, and teachers give us fantastic feedback that uh, the tool is uh, easy to use. We know that it's uh, scalable because we've seen this in use all around India and it's been adopted uh, in around 10 countries around the world. Uh, and it also, uh, one of the big benefits is that uh, it reduces dependencies. Uh, so we don't have to rely um, on uh, teachers providing face-to-face -face learning. Uh, it enables persons with vision impairment uh, to make decisions for themselves uh, about their training and about their own skills. So to demonstrate the, uh, the power of the eye tool, uh, I want to introduce you to uh, Cornelius Magalaya in, uh, in India. Um, he came to Enable India without uh, any particular um, uh, computer skills, and we were able to connect him with the iTool and the more than uh, 500 exercises that uh, are available. Through using the iTool, Cornelius was able to build his speed and efficiency uh, he was able to gain a perspective of the sighted world uh, and uh, understand uh, the quality and errors that he could be making uh, using screen reader technology. And we also provided him with uh, job simulations. So these job simulations are really very powerful uh, because they're borrowed from the real world. Uh, so these are real world um, uh, simulations that enabled Cornelius to practice his computer skills, we were then able to connect uh, Cornelius to, to relevant uh, employment. And we're very happy to report that Cornelius is working as a spam executive uh, for a, a reputed company. Um, so Cornelius is now using computers. He has uh, his eyes to the world. The iTool has reached more than 10,000 users uh, across uh, 20 Indian states and 14 uh, countries. Um, we get fantastic feedback uh, that people are using, uh, people using the iTool are able to increase their speed and efficiency. And we get fantastic reports that people with vision impairment are able to improve their understanding of the sighted world. And I think most importantly, um, we empower people with vision impairment to become economically uh, independent. So we have a what we call a, a big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, we want to digit digitally empower one million visually impaired users. Um, keeping in mind, and uh, keeping in mind, India has a, a huge population of uh, of people with disabilities. But we're not just looking within India. We're, we're also looking for partners uh, around, uh, around the world. Uh, and we're very pleased that we've been able to uh, um, uh, partner with the Luz Foundation uh, in Chile uh, to bring the iTool uh, and begin implementation in Chile. We see this as a real way that we can uh, impact the lives of uh, persons with vision impairment, not just in India, but uh, 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 around the world. We see that the I, we want to make the eye tool free of cost uh, for visually impaired users. Uh, and uh, we're very happy to be uh, partnering with, uh, with Lewis Foundation uh, in their work uh, empowering persons with, uh, with vision impairment. Thank you very much, uh, and we're uh, really looking forward to uh, uh, this uh, uh, forum today and uh, really looking forward to engaging with everyone using the iTool. Thank you.
Williams, now you can tell us about Fundación Luz and where this pilot program is inserted. And I would like to know more about the expectations of Fundación Luz regarding this pilot and why did you accept this invitation to be a part of the project? Well, uh, Luz Foundation is a foundation that has been around for 97 years. And what we want to do is to support the inclusion of people with visual disability. For this, we have several programs focused on the different stages of their lives and their needs. For example, the early stimulation program, which is for toddlers with visual disabilities. We have School Santa Lucia, which is the first special school in Chile, which is for uh, children from pre-K to eighth grade. So this is uh, elementary education. We also have musicians with visual disabilities and this boosts their skills their music skills and it is also a source of work also for entertaining and information of the people with visual disability we have the audio books library that has more than 3000 titles and we are working to increase this number we also have the functional rehabilitation program for adults and for the elderly because of different reasons uh, for people that for different reasons have lost sight and they need to uh, retake their lives so we have psychological help and also skills help so that they can achieve their goals. We also have the training and inclusion programs. And basically the training program is offering three different programs, which are uh, cooking, uh, massage therapy, and administration. So after a year of study, they get the, cap the, the skills and the knowledge that is necessary to start with a new job or continue their studies in higher education organizations. The program, as I said before, is a program that is actually actively searching for employment through agreements with companies. We give students the necessary skills to be inserted in the workplace. The pilot program is inserted in this last three programs. So rehabilitation, training and inclusion. And well, we want to give support to the teachers. We are training people for a while with these tools and with this, uh, we want to improve this process. We also have a practice for uh, people that are being prepared and also for people that are already working as to reinforce their knowledge. And a strong ally for online classes where the foundation does not have a physical presence yet. About the expectations that we have from this program is that it boosts the learning of technology because that is what has helped us to work and also study and be able to polish this skills, technical skills and social skills. And of course, the work improvement of people that are already inserted in the workplace and also the improvement of opportunities 
from this people so uh, as to give them security and through feedback that this program goes uh, gives to the user so that they can acquire a better competency to be included and in part of a society. Thank you very much, Williams, uh, Williams, for telling me about your foundation. And now I want to ask you, Williams and Julian, what are for you the main challenges in this implementation pilot? Uh, I guess I can uh, I can uh, go first. I think one of the biggest challenges for us has really been around uh, upgrading our technology at the same time we're trying to make plans how to do translation into uh, into Spanish. Um, as we upgrade our technology, as we upgrade the iTool into a new platform called uh, Blimey, we uh, we're always keeping an eye to how do we get the translation. Of, uh, of the website, of the downloadable software, and of course, uh, all of our exercises into Spanish. Uh, and this has been a little bit of a challenge for us. We knew this was going to be one of our biggest challenges. Um, and uh, we've been very fortunate to have a lot of, uh, lot of assistance uh, and a lot of advice. Uh, and I think in addition to the translation, I think uh, time zones uh, and, uh, and translation, uh, are a bit of a challenge for us. Ideally, if uh, the pandemic didn't exist, COVID-19 didn't exist, I, I'd love to be jumping on a plane and traveling to Chile uh, and really building uh, the, the software um, uh, within Chile itself. Um, but in the world that we live in, um, we, we work in time zones. Uh, and so that has been a real uh, challenge. Sometimes these meetings are not at very convenient times. Uh, but we're more than happy to uh, to, uh, to do this work, even if it means working nights and mornings, because um, we see the impact that it's having. William, me gustaría escucharte también. ¿Cuál es? William, I would like to ask you uh, as well. What are the main challenges for you? Well, for us, one of the first challenges that we had um, and that we will have is the adoption of the tools for us as trainers and also for the users. Other important challenges are to take advantage of all of the content that we have in the tool and also have the opportunity to homologate the knowledge that we already have uh, with what they have to offer. So this is one of the main challenges that we have. And we hope to overcome them as soon as possible. And also through this platform boost new practices that can give us a better idea of what is the reality of the workplace so that we can transfer that to our users. And this is very much related to the exercises, the simulation exercises of real work for our users so that they know what it would be like to be working at a company. Guilherme, what are the main learnings that you have had up to now? So what uh, challenges do you see with this pilot of implementation in Chile? Well, I think that the first point is that it is not easy to work outside of your own country. So we are in Egalité uh, changing our business model for the implementation of Chile. So that was done. It was a work that was done with the help of Zero Project and in the Impact Transfer Program. So the first challenge that we have is to think in a different way and also to understand what is uh, important for Chile, because our main objective is 
to have more impact and more work inclusion of a person with disabilities. So it is going to be necessary to be very dedicated and also to be able to think in a flexible way because we need to hear all of the feedbacks, all of the people that are in Chile and that already work with work inclusion for a while so that we can have a solution that is possible to be implemented and to have the best results possible in Chile. So the first point would be to understand that this is a complex process to change the uh, models and to think in a flexible way to hear the feedbacks and to understand. The second point is that our model has an organization, a local organization that is going to work with us. So it is very important to understand what is the profile of this organization so that we can have a good work, uh, joint work. We uh, believe a lot in cooperation, but it is very important for organizations to have a synergy with the work, with the way in which we think so that we have the best results possible. And the third and last point is that we, uh, the entrepreneurs, work a lot every day to be able to uh, solve problems and so that everything is done as fast as possible. When we are part of a of such a big project and such an important project as uh, this one that has the pact of productivity and the uh, BID and many organizations that are part of this project. So it is important to understand that we have different validations that are important. Como, eh, emprendedores que normalmente no necesitamos eh, de, de, de tener permisión para... para For us, as, eh, es, es importante que... As entrepreneurs, it is very important to consider this and to understand it so that we do not get frustrated. This is a process and all of the stages, I think, that are going to help us to have a better certainty of how... Uh, we are going to implement better. So we had different meetings with the people from the project. And many times we had questions that we had to uh, answer the same practically. And it was very important to know that this is the right model because you ask once, you ask twice, and the answers are not always certain. Not always are certain that this is the best way. So I think that a learning is for the companies that want to participate uh, from uh, companies such as the one that we have, uh, ICT, where we understand that all of the process eh, is eh, to have the best results. Eh, and se that quiere, there is a complexity when we have many organizations that work together at the same time. But it is also a good opportunity for learning. Okay, so now we are going to talk with Paloma Cid from uh, Foundation 11 and Marcela Guzman from the Rehabilitation Center, Pedro Aguirre Cerda. This is an institution where we are going to be carrying out this pilot, uh, the Foundation 11 in Chile. She is an occupational therapist with more than 20 years of experience in the support products and the adaptation to workplaces. She is specialized in geriatry and different communication methods. She has participated in national and international projects for uh, access to devices and she is now carrying out an innovation process in adaptation to workplaces for foundation level 11. 
On the other side, Marcela Guzman Pradena, she is a physiatrist. She is a director of IREPAC from the year 2014. She manages the rehabilitation and the uh, neuro rehabilitation aspect. She has participated as an expert in Chile and in Latin America. Paloma Cid, please go ahead and tell us about the uh, Foundation 11 products of support 3, 3D and also the proposal for implementation in Chile. Muchas gracias por la Thank you so much for that introduction and for the opportunity to present in this forum this project of Fundación Once and our collaboration with Pacto de Productividad in Chile. My name is Paloma Cid and I'm an occupational therapist of the Directorate of Universal and Accessibility and Innovation of Fundación Once. The objective of our unit is the creation of labor training for people with disabilities and global accessibility, promoting the creation of environments that are completely accessible. The project of design and support products in 3D for the adaptation in workplaces is born from the collaboration between Fundación Once and the Real Patronato Sobre Discapacidad, an autonomous entity which reports to the social ministry and the 2020 agenda in Spain. The starting point is the accessibility to the workplaces. So we started to create a process of adaptation to different workplaces. And this experience confirms that in those cases where it's necessary to implement a support product, we can require the customization of the same and an investment which is not always easy to assume for that reason in 2011 Fundación Once studies the possibility of integrating this technology within the adaptation of to the workplaces and trains a group of people so they are that they are able to design with different parameters so with only one design we can adapt this printing to different people modifying a series of parameters of sizes in these three years, because we started in 2018, the current situation is that through the platform www.accessibilitas.com and through other, other specific portals of 3D printing, we have made accessible to everyone 22 different designs, most of them related to activities that are conducted within the workplace. We believe this is a project that is having very good results because for example, during 2020, we had over 3,400 downloads of these designs. Additionally, through a service that we have of free printing for products for different related entities with disabilities, we provide 258 products that have already been printed and finalized. Besides, something that we believe is key, and I think it's an indicator of the project success, is that during the last quarter of 2020, we started working with Pacto in the transfer of knowledge from Fundación Once towards a Chilean entity through Pacto de Productividad in Chile. And after all of these months of dialogue and work finally the 14th of july this year we've been able to meet the work team and the rna pack with whom we've been able to made uh, make this a reality and it will last up to may probably we'll conduct about 50 hours of training minimum and we'll provide them with the necessary material to carry out this project, 3D printers, material filaments, tools, etc. We'll train the team to assemble all of these printers, uh, to set up all of these printers to the maintenance. They create the designs, all the tasks that are related to 3D printing to train them. And then they can autonomously since May, next May, they can create their own designs for more practical issues as the setting up or the assembly of all of this we are discussions with chilean suppliers which can be our hands on there when after the platform is 
impossible for us to reach certain aspects. So all of these activities involve the access to the Accessibilitas platform, the Accessibilitas portal, where, where all of the RNA PAC team will have access to material documents. They will be able to upload the designs if they decide to do so. And there will be a platform to exchange documentation, videos, etc. In order to value and evaluate the project, to assess and evaluate the project and the, with the training and the impact, both teams at Fundación NCR and Rene Pag have several indicators for the material and the transfer itself. And the other more important ones will measure the impact in the improvement and employability of people with disabilities, which is the final objective that we all have apart from this project starting from a uh, transfer of knowledge this is that uh, to now the cooperation with pacto de productividad and rna pack has been amazing and really unprecedented these are two teams the pacto and rna pack formed by people with the highest qualifications and professionalism that is impressive hence we're sure that this knowledge transfer will be much more enriching for us than probably many people think because of the impressive work. And we hope for the first quarter of 2022 to be able to provide information and measurements of some indicators as the pace of the transfer goes within this project and hopefully for the last quarter of 2022 in other sessions such as this one we can present the final results and consider that the transfer has been successful thank you very much paloma for telling us about your project and now marcela please tell us about your work in ir ir pack and in what areas are you going to carry out this project of foundation 11 and i want to ask you what are the expectations that you have for ir pack in this project and why you accepted the invitation to be part of this project Thank you very much, Vivi. Well, the National Institute for Rehabilitation, Pedro Aguirre Cerda, is an institution, a public institution that is specialized in rehabilitating people with physical disabilities, mainly uh, neuro neurological and orthopedic origin. So what we need to do is just uh, provide rehabilitation services in the population of 1 to 65 years old. And as a main objective, what we want to do is to be able to participate in the and comment on participation and social inclusion of our uh, users throughout their life cycle. So that is why we have an interdisciplinary team made up by uh, professionals of different disciplines. We uh, have a different approach, a psychosocial approach, where we incorporate the person, the family, the caregivers, and the community as the main aspect for this rehabilitation process. And of course, that when we work in this life cycle, the occupation of people and the work is part of the rehabilitation program. The incorporation is part of our work. In here, we work about the work that we do and that we have been doing with uh, different programs of professional rehabilitation and also the uh, inclusive uh, technology. This is part of our work. In this context, we are going to insert this project in which we have been invited. And uh, for us, this invitation is an opportunity to strengthen that we do so that we provide uh, the service to our elderly as to work with the development of the pro of the person and of course the work in this project has as a main access the incorporation of technology to the service of people in uh, work inclusion and our expectation when we try to participate in this initiative is to be able to participate with foundation level and learn from their experience and strengthen 
the competencies of our team in the development of the different um, systems with 3D printing that can help the inclusion of our users and considering not just the uh, current law of inclusion, but this has allowed us to talk about a significant advance in the young people and young adults that have certain disabilities. Well, and now I would like to ask Marcela and Paloma, what are for you the main challenges with this implementation pilot program? Well, we have several challenges to face among them, mainly effectively develop among the team the skills and competences for the design and implementation of tools for social inclusion, incorporating 3D technology and gaining basic knowledge and adaptations with technical aid of 3D and incorporating these new technologies in new supporting tools to improve the offer of adaptations and personalized, customized help uh, that we have at the Institute. And as another challenge, we have that we need to integrate our professional teams into industrial design or alike for a true space in printing that will allow us to develop further the technical aid and technology for labor inclusion of our users. And of course, sharing all of this with the rest of the team at the Institute, all of this knowledge, and also with the entire community, the community in which we develop. Thank you, Marcela. Along the same lines, Paloma, would like to listen to your opinion and your challenges. Well, I would say that based on our role in the project, we have mainly two challenges. On the one hand, the distance, and because we're not, because we're living in this pandemic, this program was not in person as it would have been, and it would have been very enriching for all of us participating in the project. However, the situation is, it's what it is. So we're truly happy because of the meetings and every encounter that we've had through these platforms have been very productive and satisfactory with good results for the entity and particularly for people with disabilities. The second challenge from our role is more on the bureaucratic side, the requirements of each country and every entity are different and we must realize that we must consider the different procedures, the paperwork, etc. So we must take the time to ideate satisfactory strategies for all parties. However, these challenges are truly development opportunities and opportunities for learning as well. These are not a problem, but an opportunity. Just to finish with this round of questions, I would like to ask all of our panelists, how do you think this pilot could create a program in the labor condition of people with disabilities in Chile? Our mission is to impact labor inclusion in people with disabilities. And to us, it's very interesting that our work now is moving forward from Brazil and conducted in Chile. Our biggest objective is to show the market and the society the importance of having equal opportunities for people with disabilities. We believe that with our recruitment tool, which is completely accessible for different people with disabilities, we make companies understand the potential of candidates and people with disabilities people that could have an equal or better result or outcomes than anyone else in their company. Thank you, Guilherme. I would like to now hear from Julian. 
Thank you very much. Uh, so we believe that uh, labour inclusion changes when people with disability are empowered to make decisions about their own skills and their career direction. Uh, by combining forces with a, a, an incredible organisation like uh, Foundation Luz, we uh, and, and focusing on utilising technology developed by persons with disability for persons with disability, we, we believe that we can make fundamental changes uh, to the labour landscape. Thank you, Julian. Now, Williams, could you please give us a few words, your opinion, and tell us how do you see this impact? Well, very related to what Julian said, I believe that I am the example of labor inclusion right here. And uh, it makes me feel a part of society, doing my job, making my decisions, and especially realizing all of the dreams that you have just like anyone else. And now the fact that the, the people have a means through which reinforce their learning and improve at their own pace and managing to establish or to gain the confidence that's necessary to face labor in a good way undoubtedly give you gives you an opportunity to grow and be a part of something uh, well with something as simple as a software well simple is one way of putting it but this makes us part of life just like anyone else where differences are, are erased and the gaps are closed Thank you, Williams, for your words. Now, Marcela, please tell us, how do you see the impact that you hope to generate with this alliance? Well, we hope that by creating competences in the teams, we can develop and create the support tools with a 3D printing, and this will help us reduce the gaps for labor inclusion, making adjustments in the job positions. It's something that is not considered in the law of labor inclusion. It depends on the possibilities of each company or the knowledge that each company has. However, by conducting, implementing this design and creating with 3D printing allows us to increase autonomy of people in their job positions so that they can opt for better job positions in the labor market. And we can raise awareness among companies about the need of creating supporting tools for inclusion. And of course, installing the use of technology as an idea that goes beyond the users of the institute this could serve as a pilot program allowing for a massive development of 3d support a tools allowing for social or labor inclusion thank you marcela now we'll hear from paloma We hope that the design and printing of 3D products is facilitating resource for people with disabilities, but also for companies and entities that are hiring, having an institution such as Iron IPAC and as the supplier of the service in Chile, we believe is a guarantee for success because they have a specific program for work training and a vast experience, I believe that the most difficult part is to find a vehicle which coordinates the service. And in this case, it exists and it works spectacularly thanks to Iron APAC. So we hope that all of these products, the support products that are designed will relieve some fears that certain higher people with disabilities usually have when beginning a labor relationship because of the costs that this may involve or because they believe this will suppose the problem to be a problem for the entity. So we hope that this is a very common resource used by companies and by people with disabilities. 
Bueno, eh, well, habiendo escuchado ya, having ya. listened to all of our panelists and all of the allied organizations that we have here and their initiatives, we'd like to close. But first, we'd like to thank all of you. It's been very joyful to hear from you and your reflections and experiences about this work that we're performing together. But before we finish, I would like to highlight some points that have been mentioned and some ideas regarding the work that I've been a part of for this past month's first conducting a process of this characteristic attracting initiatives of different parts of the world to implement their innovative solutions in a different context is not easy and that's meant challenges and learnings for all of us involved first we have the challenge of creating or building teams behind innovations there's people they need to know each other create different work dynamics define the paths forward and objectives and i can say that we've been uh, we've had the advantage of having committed people in, with a, their, their best attitude and dedicating time to this project. So the work has been organically and created. In this country, we require knowing the context and in this case is um, the labor inclusion context to understand how these uh, initiatives of innovation add value. And as the counterpart of this process, it's important to facilitate the delivery of that knowledge and coordinate the people holding that knowledge and making it available, giving space to discussion and understanding that the leaders of the project may need to have all the information available and of course there's things that we need to consider such as the legislation cultural factors and of course language which is not a minor issue in this line we've seen the challenge of crossing language barriers we have two initiatives here in the case of egalite and enable india one in portuguese and one in english and and we need to consider that in the process one the one hand, we have everything that Julian was telling us with the translation involving the technology that needs to be translated into Spanish and the entire communication phase of the team with which we're creating this. And so we need to consider that that requires more time. We'll need to be very patient. But we see that with the willingness, we can move forward in the process and we've been able to do so. As you mentioned, well, Julian, based on this uh, time differences, we have important, significant time zones, uh, th that different time zones in the case of India, we have 10. So that involves beginning our meetings earlier and they also need to adjust. And sometimes they have late meetings. It involves the logistics that we've been coordinating and another important learning is that organizations are not homogeneous it's different to conduct a pilot in with a public organization than with a private one the times are timelines are different bureaucracy is different and the way of making decisions is different so first we need to consider all the characteristics that we require in partners with each initiatives and with this working group to then move to the discussions and we already have more clear definitions and as Guilherme said this is a complex process which requires flexibility and open-mindedness so that we can reach good solutions and impact of productividad we have a coordinating role in the process and we are eager to help and kick off this pilot programs and our biggest challenge is to make available to the entire uh, dis people with disabilities and the community in Chile to give them better opportunities but we want to strengthen these initiatives and strengthen the capabilities in the case of Fundacion Luz and uh, IRA PAC and then with the ones that have their DNA in social and labor inclusion will be aiming for a higher sustainability of these initiatives in Chile. So with these words, I am closing this segment and thank you so much for everyone for their attention.